Hi, this is Howard Chow at Dune Insights, um, coming to you with another of our podcast uh, interviews from our spring event in Ag and Food Tech. Um, on this um, session, we're going to be talking about Windfall Bio and Josh Silverman, their founder. Uh, it's a startup that's operating in the methane space. They're helping farmers address uh, the methane emission problem and in a positive way that creates value for farmers. Um, Nick, you did a lot of the footwork on this company. Why did you like them? Yeah, sure. I, I'm, I, I love companies that are able to a, achieve a, a, a positive ROI for their customers, uh, namely farmers, as well as a, a, a return to the environment. So I think Windfall Bio does that um, more than many other companies we look at there. So they are addressing the uh, methane emissions problem. And what they're doing is they they use a proprietary uh, nature-based technology that um, that uh, enriches uh, natural methane-eating microbes uh, out of the soil and uh, turns that into fertilizer uh, using nitrogen as well. So uh, they are able to actually uh, help the, the methane emission, uh, emission issue while also helping with uh, soil quality for the farmers. So uh, the, this, uh, this uh, two-pronged attack on, on both helping the environment as well as helping farmers uh, reduce the, the inputs onto their soil, I think is just a, a recipe for success. So I really liked what they're doing. Really uh, in, uh, great founder, very dynamic, and uh, loved hearing from them. Great. Well, let's listen to what they have to say. Okay. Thanks, Howard. Thanks very much for the invitation and for um, setting this up. And Nick as well. Thank you. Uh, and yeah, I was going to do my best uh, Monty Python impression. And you know, and now for something completely different. So we don't do anything um, at the moment. No software, no hardware, no equipment, no electronics. We are a biological company. So biological solution to a climate problem that also helps farmers with resources that they need on site in particular. So that, yep. Uh, Next slide. Yep. So our primary focus in terms of the problem that we're solving for farmers is the methane problem. And again, this is completely different from what we talked about earlier. But when we think about the problems of climate, uh, methane is a extremely large problem that is growing and growing in um, realization of the importance. And you, we know that uh, over the last 20 years, there's been a big focus on carbon dioxide and carbon dioxide mitigation solutions. Uh, but methane is a significantly um, worse greenhouse gas, 86 times worse than CO2 over a 20-year period. And methane has been growing in the atmosphere very rapidly. Um, and while methane is about 50% of the actual warming of the atmosphere today, it's only received about 2% of the investment in climate over the last 20 years. So it definitely underfunded, underappreciated, but certainly growing as an opportunity. Uh, so next slide. So farmers are really sitting at the center of this crisis. So almost 25% of the methane that's going into the atmosphere is coming from agricultural sources. And farms, in theory, are great sinks for methane. The soil is a great sink for methane uh, as ways to absorb it. And methane is a resource. It's a feedstock. Again, if you have concentrated enough methane, you can sell it in a pipeline today. It has actual value. And that's very different from CO2, which is a waste product, right? CO2 is the bottom of the thermodynamic energy well. Anything you want to do to CO2 costs money, costs energy, um, costs effort. Whereas you know, methane is a fuel, it's a resource. If you have it, you can turn it into things that are valuable. And so we want to give farmers those tools to be able to collect methane on their site and realize the value from that um, product and prevent it from going to the atmosphere where it is simply a waste. So next slide. Yeah, and I think you know, we've heard messaging from a variety of different industries, not necessarily today, but where climate's, uh, or sorry, climate is a, obviously a problem, and farmers have been pointed out as being on one side. Sorry, I don't know if I keep moving it or if it changes in sensitivity, uh, but uh, the uh, they are potentially a, uh, a helper in solving climate change, but also potentially bad actors where many agricultural practices are not helping to drive uh, climate change in a positive direction. And so, well, whereas all of us want farmers to be climate heroes, at the end of the day, farmers are still a business, right? Farmers have to make money. And for us to ask them to do things that are better for the climate, it has to pencil out for the farmer and make sense um, economically before anything else happens. So next slide. 
that. So our goal is to make sustainable farming possible by making it profitable. And again, this idea that methane has value, methane can actually become a resource for a farmer. Uh, and this should be something if with the right tools, if they can capture it and they can drive their improved profitability, they will do that. So next slide, so move a little bit quicker. Um, so our solution is about pollution. So organisms in the soils all around the world that use methane as their sole source of carbon energy. They will eat methane out of the atmosphere and they will also fix nitrogen and put that into the soil. So this is a normal, natural part of most environments and it drives um, the viability and fertility of the soil naturally. So next slide. So our goal is to use these uh, natural organisms. So we're a nature-based company that's taking biological solutions uh, transforming, uh, you know, we prevent the emissions of methane as a green and instead allow farmers to capture it as a windfall for themselves. And because these ports fix nitrogen, we can actually turn this waste into fertilizer directly on site, which is directly impactful to the farmer's bottom line. So next slide. Yeah, we can create fertilizer on the planet today and we allow to do using their own resources. So this thing that is profitable is makes sense for the farmer and uh, makes sense for the climate. So next slide. So with the, the team I can just, uh, I can stop there to roughly stay on. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, just say, yeah, this is, this is our team and happy to take questions. So. Yeah. Um, I think uh, you're, you're going to, we're, Alex is going to join me. Alex from Indie Bio is going to join me here. Um, so um, I'll, I'll kick off with quick. So maybe you can just explain how physically this would work on a typical farm. You know, it's how do you collect the methane? How do you process it? Um, what, what are the mechanics of it? Yeah. And so the, there are a lot of different sources of methane. And so depending on where uh, exactly where we're deploying the physical changes a lot. The example I like to use a lot is dairies, because dairies uh, are a great entry point market for us. Certainly, and, and most people are very aware, they've been certainly beaten. These foods have come out. Um, so, you know, only cows produce methane. The dairies have the cows in them, typically, so that the uh, cows are closed. The dairy so they're removing a stream of methane. The nice part about dairies, they are collecting solid from the They compost those. So they're actually on site and they're growing um, crops that help feed the cows because fish and sorry. I was trying not to move it. I don't know if it was helping or not, but uh, <laughs> uh, and so essentially what we do is we seed our bacteria into the compost piles that are already there on site that the farm is already up putting labor and effort into generating. And we have the, all we do for the farmer is have them relocate those compost piles from way over on the other side of the yard to have them relocate them next to the, uh, the barn. So they can take the methane stream, the gas coming from the barn, run it over the compost piles. The bacteria live in the compost, eat the methane out of the gas stream and put the nitrogen and carbon directly into the compost pile, which the farmer is then going to use on their own field. And the farmer recognizes the value by simply buying less ammonia, less urea, the less fertilizer that they would have bought anyway, because there's typically not enough nitrogen in that compost. So our goal is minimum change to the farmer's day-to-day -day operation and leveraging the um, infrastructure that's on site. Um, in that regard, I'm wondering, we all biology is like notoriously fickle. So microorganisms most of the companies presenting here are you know, running really delicate processes. Can you yeah. talk a bit about stability and predictability and how that actually um, translates to kind of the, the labor cost? Like, is it something that someone is checking every day and working with? Do they need to hire newly trained people or is it relatively you know, low hands-on? Um, so it's, it's low hands-on. And again, if we're using the composting facilities on site, again, that they are already dedicating resources to turning and ma maintaining that compost because you have to do that to make sure that you're getting high quality compost, uh, which because again, they want to use this to grow their own crops. So one of the benefits we have is because uh, we grow ourselves in this, you know, 
defined area in the compost pile in a methane stream, it is much more reproducible than, say, the people who are putting nitrogen fixing bacteria out into the field, where you're much more susceptible to weather, you're much more susceptible to the variations in soil quality and things of that nature. So we have a defined environment, a defined feedstock, and all of that nitrogen fixation happens in that in, you know, defined environment. And so the farmer can sample the compost and for nitrogen content before it ever goes out in the field. So when the farmer is saying, oh, I applied this amount of fertilizer to my field, they know there's no risk associated with that. And, um, and they're already testing and monitoring the composition of that compost because, again, they don't want to over fertilize because it's a cost to them. So uh, it's, it, again, fits right into their normal parameters. Um, and they can, again, in this situation, they can make it up if they, for whatever reason, the microbes don't grow, um, then they would just put the same amount of ammonia they would have put on otherwise. So again, it reduces a lot of the risk for the farmer um, in that regard because it's in a defined environment. Questions? Version and the mm -hmm. methane emissions. Um, um, well, so so the conversion rates absolutely, and at um, you know a few thousand parts per million um, down to a few hundred parts per million, we're getting north of ninety percent conversion in less than ten seconds in the typical environment that we'd be talking about. So those, those efficiencies are extremely high relative to anything you'd get thermochemically under those conditions. Um, in terms of emissions, um, I'm not, so our system doesn't emit methane, right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. The bacteria are consuming it. So, so, it's, so a poorly managed compost pile will emit methane, right? And, and the whole idea of why we turn it, why you want to aerate it is to prevent the methanogens from activating. And so the compost turns into higher quality fertilizer. And so this is where you know, we want the farmers to be well managing and, and turning and manipulating. Now, our organisms need oxygen where the bacteria are eating methane, they don't produce methane. It's sort of by definition, if there's no oxygen you produce, if there is, there's not. And when we take gas out of a barn, there's a lot of oxygen around. Um, and so when we are flowing the gas through, when we're aerating the compost, we're act actively reducing any emissions that might be taking place uh, because the compost is poorly aerated. And if there was any methane being produced, our organisms, if they're sitting in the top layer where they're exposed to air, they'll eat it before it gets out into the environment as well. So in theory, again, well-managed compost doesn't emit methane. Many compost is not well-managed and we should be able to mitigate those emissions as well. We're not normally talking about that because we'd rather the farmers just manage the compost correctly to begin with, but it's a good safety uh, insurance protocol. So, so we're, we're kind of out of time. Any last quick questions before we move on? Yeah, uh, Celine. Uh, I was wondering if in addition to bringing value to a farmer by providing cheap compost, you have also in mind to have some tools to monitor how much uh, methane is actually saved for future credits or for future B Corp willing to buy variety milk? Yep. No, absolutely. And we, we are working with numerous dairy brands right now with the idea that we can recognize this value to the consumer. And you know, our goal right now, our pricing, our business model is that this makes sense to the farmer based on the nitrogen fixation. So in the absence of credits, in the absence of consumer premium, this should still pencil out and it still has an ROI for the farmer and makes sense because again, it directly reduces their payments for fertilizer. Um, and so you know, our goal is to actually let the dairy brands, let the um, consumer facing brands advertise this as low methane milk, low methane, low climate impact, climate friendly, whatever they want to call it, without actually having to charge the consumers a premium. As we've seen over and over again, you know, consumers say they want sustainability. Everyone's very interested in being sustainable. Very few people are willing to pay any kind of a premium um, associated with that. So if the farmer's getting paid on the back end uh, for this, there's no need to charge the consumer and we can allow consumers to make that right choice and dairy brands or other farm brands can recognize that through market share increase as opposed to a um, price increase. Okay, great. Thanks very much, Josh. Yeah.